Hello, Soberinos, and welcome to this week's Friday Fix. And happy Christmas to you. Um, we are a day away from Christmas and the festivities and the celebrations. If you are somebody that is enjoying the Christmas festivities, then I wish you a happy Christmas and a happy festive period. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the importance of reframing Christmas. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by reframing and why it's important to do it with Christmas when we stop drinking and we're learning to live our lives sober. So first of all, let me explain about reframing. So all I mean by reframing is when we look at the same situation differently, when we attribute a different meaning to a situation. And probably the best way to explain that is to give you an example. And the example I'm going to give you is not drinking related and it's not um, it's not even Christmas related. Um, but it hopefully it explains what I mean by reframing. Let's imagine you're driving along a country road and it's narrow and it's bendy um, and it's a dangerous road for overtaking. And let's imagine a car speeds up behind you on this narrow country lane and overtakes you on a bend really dangerously and shoots off ahead of you. One way that I can imagine a lot of us will be framing that picture will be to think of the other driver as a bit of an idiot, would be to feel a bit judgmental um, of that person driving that car who's just overtaken really dangerously. Um, and to be quite judgmental about that and to, yeah, and to kind of think of them as a bit of an idiot, um, as to think of them as someone who doesn't really care about anybody else on the roads and to feel kind of superior and to tut, maybe even to get irritated, maybe even to get angry, maybe even to get a bit frustrated. So that would be quite a common a normal way to frame that particular picture. But there are other ways of framing the same picture, of reframing the picture. Um, one of the ways that we could reframe that picture um, to give ourselves a more calm and comfortable experience without having to go through um, more unhelpful and uh, negative emotions like stress and frustration and anger and all of those things would be to reframe it. What we could do instead of feeling superior and judgmental and angry and frustrated and, and stressful um, is to think about what that other driver might be going through in order for it to be so important for him or her. Let's call her a her in this context. Let's let's imagine all of the different things that could be going on for her that she has just driven really dangerously on this country lane. Um, and one of the ways of reframing it might be that maybe there is a passenger in the back of that car that's in labour and having to get to the hospital really, really quickly. Um, maybe that person is in such a rush Maybe they've got a family member who's dying and they're needing to get there in a hurry. Maybe they've just had some really bad news and they're having to get from A to B so quickly that nothing else matters. There could be things going on in that person's life where they are prioritising getting to their destination more quickly than they normally would. Maybe the person behind the wheel of that car is a normal, helpful, happy, um, lovely and kind person. But maybe the situation they're in right at that moment in time necessitates that they have to drive super quickly to get from A to B. And I'm guessing, and I know this is true for me, I'm guessing that it's been true for you at some point in time where you have actually driven in a way that you don't ordinarily drive 
where you have driven slightly more dangerously, where you haven't indicated correctly at a roundabout, where you have um, looked at an approaching vehicle and not really seen, seen it and driven out in front of it and gone, oh, sorry, um, there will have been incidents that you will have been involved in when your own driving has been questionable. And that isn't through any bad intention on your part. That is just simply a set of circumstances that you've been in where you've you've needed to drive super quickly or you've been concentrating so hard on something that you've seen that you've not indicated. That doesn't make you a bad driver. It just means that there were a set of circumstances at any one time that led to you driving in a way that you wouldn't normally drive. Um, and if we can reframe the picture um, in this particular example of this driver shooting past us on a dangerous bend, instead of starting to get judgmental and stressed and angry um, and superior and allowing those negative emotions to build, if we can reframe the picture and think about what might be going on for that person that has led to them driving in that way that means they they need to get from a to b super quickly so quickly and fast that they've put themselves at risk by driving dangerously there could be something really difficult going on for that person at that moment in time which has led them to drive in that way that is an example of reframing so okay i'm going to explain how we might apply this concept of reframing to stopping drinking and going through Christmas. Now I have made some notes here and I just want to go through them um, to make sure I cover everything. I've put here <laughs> the question, the real test of my ability here will be if I can interpret my own notes. Unconscious mind has a picture based on repeated experience. It knows what to expect. OK, so with Christmas, what has happened up till now is that we've created a picture of Christmas and what it means to us through our repeated past experiences of Christmas. So if for decades or for years you have been drinking at Christmas and New Year, what you've done is you've set up an expectation in the unconscious part of your mind. The unconscious part of your mind knows to expect, knows what to expect when it hears Christmas songs. It knows what to expect when it hears carols. It knows what to expect when it sees tinsel and Christmas trees. It knows what to expect when it sees Christmas displays in shop windows and hears Christmas music coming from pubs and shops. It knows what to expect when it's seeing Christmas everywhere. It's seeing Christmas produce in the supermarkets. Your unconscious mind will be setting up a picture that shows you what Christmas means. When it hears and sees and tastes and smells and experiences all of the signs around it that tells it Christmas is coming. It will create a picture of what to expect and that picture will involve alcohol because that's what you've taught it to expect over the years. So certain triggers around you like the music, like the smells, like the visuals, like everything you're seeing around you and experiencing around you, all of those will kind of prompt associations with drinking because that's what you've, that's the expectation you've created in your unconscious mind. We all have a picture of what Christmas actually means to us. And then we, we kind of unconsciously bring that picture to life. So if Christmas has always meant to you getting drunk and having hangovers and behaving in certain ways, then that is the meaning you have attributed to Christmas. And that is what your unconscious mind will be expecting. And that's what can make it 
challenging at Christmas because the conscious part of us will be saying things like, yeah, I want to do Christmas sober. But the unconscious part of us um, that we're kind of oblivious to, that we won't be thinking about, um, will be giving us very different messages. It will be telling us that we we expect to drink. We expect to get drunk because that's what we've always done. So there can be at an unconscious level, there can be a bit of conflict going on in our minds between the conscious part of us that's saying, yeah, I want to stay sober and I want to learn how to do Christmas sober and I want to get excited about it and I want to get motivated about it and I want to be really strong and I want to stay on track um, and I want to join all these other sober gurus who are saying about how amazing Christmas is when it's sober. But at the same time, the experience isn't quite as easy as all that because you've got this unconscious part of you that has this expectation. Christmas means drinking. And without the drinking part, Christmas means nothing. So that kind of conflict can be going on. So what we need to do is we need to reframe the picture of Christmas. We need to reframe it and we need to give it another meaning. So we need to change what Christmas means to us. We need to see it differently and we need to give it a different meaning. So what I'm going to do is try and remember how to move forward a slide. There we go. I don't do these often enough. So what I'm going to do is to suggest that you start by painting a picture of what Christmas used to be like for you. So when you were drinking, what would Christmas look like for you? What would be in that picture? What would Christmas mean to you when you were drinking? And I will give an example of the old picture of Christmas for me, what the old picture would look like. Um, but the question I want you to answer is this. If you were to paint a picture of what Christmas has meant to you up till now, what would it look like? And I want you to answer that question. You can pause the video right here if you want to, and you can make your notes in answer to that question. Or you can just do it in your mind, one way or the other, it doesn't matter. But answer that question for yourself. If you were to paint a picture of what Christmas has meant to you up till now, what would it look like? And I'm gonna share with you what my answer to that question would be. So in my drinking days, what Christmas meant to me was an excuse to drink more, um, an excuse to not just drink more, but for that drinking in higher quantities to kind of be more acceptable. So I used to love Christmas because there were more social opportunities, there were more parties, there were more gatherings, there were more meals, um, everybody else would be drinking in higher quantities. There'd be a kind of expectation that we would be getting drunk and that we would be commiserating over hangovers. Um, everybody else would be drinking more. Therefore, it gave me permission to drink um, in the way that I wanted to drink, which was lots. Um, so Christmas meant that it meant permission for me to drink lots and to drink in higher quantities and to drink quicker and to be drunk because everybody expected there to be some drunken shenanigans going on. So the run up to Christmas for me, all that excitement, all the music, all the glitter, all the tinsel, all the decorations, all of the shop displays, the music coming on the radio, the carols, the conversations, there's a kind of, for me, there would have been a kind of buzz, a kind of excitement. And all of that would trigger in me a drinking response because that's all I knew. My old picture of Christmas was all of that stuff just triggered in me or prompted in me a drinking response. I associated drinking with all of those things. So the atmosphere in the run up to Christmas, it was kind of everything not just what I was seeing around me, what I was hearing around me, um, what I was tasting and smelling, 
you know, all the all the food, all of the mulled wine, all of the sugary things, the menus, the I don't know, everywhere, the recipes, the magazines, everywhere there would be Christmassy stuff everywhere, but it all denoted one thing and it all denoted um, or meant drinking. That was what I associated with all of those different things, drinking. Um, drinking at every opportunity. Um, then on Christmas Day, <laughs> what my Christmas days meant to me were waking up hungover. No, let me start with Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, the old picture of Christmas Eve was all about looking forward to starting drinking um, and drinking with wrapping presents. I would associate the wrapping presents with the drinking. I would associate the drinking with the wrapping presents. So I would wrap presents on Christmas Eve. I would put Christmas music on and I would drink and I would get drunk and I would usually um, meet up with someone, go to the pub um, or have someone round. So it would be sociable. Um, I would get drunk. I would wake up on Christmas Day with a hangover. And then what Christmas Day looked like for me were, would be feeling so bad with a hangover that I would usually be having a panic attack or an anxiety attack. And I would need hair of the dog to recover from that and to feel normal enough to be able to cope with Christmas Day dinner um, with my family. Um, and then it would mean starting drinking earlier in the day than I normally would, starting drinking at sort of middle of the afternoon, early afternoon, maybe middle of the day, but using my first drink as hair of the dog to start to feel normal again, and then drinking more because I would have to drink more, because I'd have to get through that feeling of normal to get to feeling drunk again, but I'd need more in order to feel drunk again, um, because I was kind of topping up from the night before. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I would need more to feel normal. And then I would need more on top of that to actually start feeling drunk again in order to start relaxing, to start unwinding, to start enjoying myself and to start becoming the life and soul again. I would need more. So I would get drunker on Christmas Day. So Christmas Day, it would mean seeing family. And it would mean playing games and it would mean having a nice meal. But that was kind of all peripheral. The main event for me on Christmas Day would be recovering from the hangover with drink and then enjoying all of those things. Those things would kind of come second to the drinking. And then, of course, Boxing Day, what Boxing Day would mean to me would be another hangover and maybe a more relaxed vibe because it's kind of the come down after Christmas. Um, and maybe it would mean more permission for me to drink even more because I wouldn't have the restraints of having family around me. I'd be able to fully indulge my desire for drink on Boxing Day because I wouldn't have the, the restrictions around me that I would have had on Christmas Day. Um, so Boxing Day would be a day of food and lots of leftovers. It would be a day of total indulgence um, in terms of drink and food. And it would be a day of getting absolutely wasted. And pretty much that is my old picture of Christmas. Everything centred around the drink. The drink was at the middle of it all. The drink was at the top of the list. And the other things were... The other things, the people, family, presents, games, Christmas Day dinner, carols, music, all of the, the paraphernalia around Christmas was secondary. These were all prompts for me to drink, triggers for me to drink. Um, they weren't the main event. The drinking was the main event. And that's the kind of big difference for me between the old picture and the new picture. The other part of my picture of Christmas was, of course, um, there were positives in there. I mean, the drinking did help me to lose my inhibitions and the drinking did give me confidence and it enabled me to be loud and it enabled me to enjoy stuff. 
But that window of enjoyment and laughs um, was quite small before I would get too drunk. And of course, being too drunk would lead to blackouts. It would lead to shame. It would lead to guilt. It would lead to embarrassment. And all of those things would lead to an erosion of my self-respect um, and an erosion of my self-confidence. Um, and yeah, even things like, you know, family memories, looking back to previous Christmases, everybody would be having a laugh about, you know, me jiving in a drunken stupor with my dad in the kitchen and falling over. That would become a family joke. Um, and we'd all laugh about it, but inwardly I would be crippled with shame. So yes, there would be memories and there'd be laughs about those memories, but those memories would be really um, crippling me because I would feel so much shame around my behaviour. So that's a kind of summary of the old picture of, of my Christmas. Did I have anything else on there that I wanted to share? I've put here Boxing Day, Hangover, Drinking, Attempts to Moderate Up Till New Year and very few memories. It was all around the drinking and the rest was peripheral. Yeah, so between that Christmas, that sort of Boxing Day and New Year, I would be so super conscious of moderating my drinking um, so that I didn't just end up on a massive spiral by the time I got to New Year and actually killing myself with the amount I was drinking, that I would moderate, I would, I would kind of come off it after Christmas I would moderate between Christmas and New Year in order to give myself the green light to drink as much as I wanted over New Year. So I would go for it over Christmas. I would have to work really hard and painfully at moderating my drinking between Christmas and New Year. And then at New Year, I would go for it as well. And then I would have to come off, come off again in the New Year before I started work again. So, yeah, <laughs> snippets of fun within that picture. Um, but mostly shame, guilt, embarrassment, blackouts, very few memories of anything. And um, it's all about the drinking and the rest is peripheral. That is a summary of the old picture for me of Christmas. So the new picture. And this is what I'm suggesting that you do. I'm suggesting that you can kind of start, when you stop drinking, you can start with a blank canvas. You can reframe your Christmases in any way you want. You can, you can give your sober Christmases any meaning that you want. You can decide with a blank canvas as to what you want Christmas to mean to you. Forget the old picture. That's old. That's in the past. What that's meant to you up until now is simply that. It's what that's meant to you up until now. It, that's, that's, that's over and done with. You can put that in the past. You now have a blank canvas to create a new picture of Christmas and what it means to you. Um, so start with a blank canvas. See it as a blank canvas. My new picture, what Christmas now means to me, is some of the same things, but I think the difference in my new picture is that those things take centre stage. So for me, the new meaning of Christmas, the sober meaning of Christmas, it's about authentically connecting with people. It's about an opportunity to see family, spend time with family, um, and share love and share connection and share gifts and share good times. It's about appreciating and being grateful for everything that we have. So it's about food. It's about warmth. It's about home and comfort and family. Um, it's about playing games and enjoyment. It's about creating memories as opposed to destroying memories. It's also a time for me, Christmas and New Year, it's become a time for reflection on what's gone well over the last few months or the last year and what I would like to change in the upcoming year. 
Um, so it's a bit of a time for reflection and a time for planning and preparation. It's also a time for me of celebrating the good, really celebrating um, the year that's just gone and all of the good that's come from that year. And it's also about celebrating the good relationships I've got with the people around me. And it's also about supporting other people. And I think it's really important whether you celebrate Christmas or whether you don't, when you're coming to the end of a year and the beginning of a new year, to actually, yes, be grateful for everything that you've got and to celebrate all of the good that you've got in your life. But also it's about supporting other people. So it might be about giving to charitable causes or it might be just about doing good for the people in your life or doing good for yourself and putting yourself at the heart of things and the center of things. Um, but in a nutshell, my new picture of Christmas is really about food. It's about family. It's about celebration, it's about gratitude, and it's about enjoyment. And all of those things are centre stage. And drink just doesn't feature. Alcohol, it's, it's not even in the picture. It's totally outside of the picture. Um, I suppose it's in the picture in the sense that other people are drinking around me. But in terms of my own boundaries and my own space and my own personal meaning of Christmas, it, it's just not there. It's not a thing. And it's totally possible for you to keep alcohol out of your picture and to completely change the meaning, reframe the meaning of Christmas for you so that alcohol is no longer in it. It's just not a feature. And it might only feature because other people are doing it around you. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to give you the message that it's totally possible to reframe your Christmas so that it means something different to you to what it's meant before. And I want to finish with a question. Um, I mean, I would love you to share anything, any insights, any responses, any light bulb moments that you have in watching this video and thinking about how you might reframe your Christmas and also thinking about, you know, some of the things you might have listed in terms of what the old picture of Christmas meant to you. I would love to hear any of those things. But the three, uh, the, there's a question I'm going to leave you with. And the question is, what three things are your top priorities to have in your reframed Christmas? your your new picture of what Christmas means to you? What are going to be your three top priorities to have in your new picture of Christmas? And do share those with me. I would love to hear from you. Now, I'm just trying to work out my dates. So Friday, where are we today? We're Wednesday, 22nd. Thursday is 23rd. Friday is the 24th. So Friday is Christmas Eve. So you will be watching this on Christmas Eve. So what I'm going to do in the morning on Christmas Day, which is tomorrow, which is our Saturday share, is I will do a quick Christmas Day Saturday share with you in the morning, just so that we are touching base and connecting on Christmas Day, just to give you a bit of motivation and a bit of inspiration for staying sober, whatever you're doing, wherever you are on Christmas Day. I will look forward to catching up with you tomorrow to say happy Christmas and to wish you well on your sober Christmas day. But in the meantime, let's go get sober together. Bye for now.